last time you told a lie. The last time you were dishonest. There's every chance you remember it, because once you've been dishonest, you have to keep protecting that lie, lest you be caught out. And that, as things turn out, is hard work. Hi, I'm Vernon Diamond, and welcome to the program. Now, today we're going to be taking another look at God's rest for you from a different perspective. And do stay tuned, because in just a few minutes, I'll be telling you about the powerful prayer that could be coming your way to help you through whatever it is that you happen to be dealing with in your life, just at the moment. We live in a world where things are not always what they seem. In fact, the more reliant we are on the media in shaping our understanding of reality, the more distorted things can become. Spin doctors, PR firms, vested interests, the glossy face of advertising. (laughs) Reality ain't what it used to be. Back in the good old days, before TV and the internet, people just didn't consume as much information and entertainment as they do today. In fact, there are still many parts of the world today where those media haven't taken root. And in those places, reality is much more tangible. But the moment we go to mass visual media in particular... We enter a whole different world. It's a world where reality and fantasy blur. It's a world where you can make something that isn't seem as though it is. And the longer we're immersed in that world, the less concerned we become with the old-fashioned concepts like, well, the truth. Truth? No no such thing. There's just a whole bunch of different perspectives on the same thing. And in that environment, the easiest thing in the world is to rationalise away dishonesty. The easiest thing in the world is to think to ourselves, well, no, I'm not really lying. I'm I'm in a world where everyone's clamouring for people's attention. I'm just putting my best foot forward so that I'll get noticed. And that, that's a slippery slope. Now, this program, A Different Perspective, it's not just being listened to on your local station, but right around the world. So it's hard for me to make broad-sweeping generalisations about things like politics. But in my country, which of course is Australia, I really feel sorry for politicians. I really do. It's a tough gig. Our system of government's based on the British Westminster system with an independent head of state, two houses of parliament, an upper and lower house, and a government that's formed by a majority in the lower house. The Prime Minister is the leader of that majority, so it's a parliamentary system rather than an executive system like, say, the US. Anyhow, what strikes me about the lives that politicians in Australia lead is that the media forces them into a corner. I'm not saying it's the media's fault. It's just that the news is so instant. At the sniff of anything, the media's onto it. Tough interviews, questions sometimes designed to sell newspapers instead of necessarily being newsworthy in and of themselves. The politicians are trying to run a country, but often politics and the media make the handling of complex, delicate issues very difficult. Of course, I love the transparency the media brings, but it's tough on the politicians. How do you balance the delicacy of dealing with an extremely complex issue with the demands of the media for quick, simple, cheap and popular eight-second grabs? You'd be torn in this direction and that direction... And staying honest would be incredibly hard work. I don't know how they do it. Now, reduce that down from the macro of politics to the micro of your life and mine in this this fast-moving world. We kind of have the same problem. I can't tell you the number of times that people have sat before me in job interviews and told me all sorts of lies about themselves just to get the job, selling themselves as something that they aren't in order to get the gig. And every now and then, I've made the wrong choice, picked someone who on the surface, and even with reference checks, seemed to have the ability only to discover that they were simply never, ever cut out to do that particular job. And then, then comes the pain, both to the organisation and the individual, of having to let them go. And here, I guess, is the point of all my rambling. Dishonesty is hard work. When someone misrepresents themselves into a job that they can't do, that's exhausting. Have you ever been in a job that you weren't cut out for? My, it's hard work. Whereas when you're doing the thing that you're always made to do, even though it's hard work, of course, there's a natural ease to it. I want to share with you a couple of words of wisdom from God's Word 
about the burden of dishonesty. Over the last few weeks, we've been talking about entering into God's rest, I guess because so many people are exhausted and tired. And the whole dishonesty thing, keeping up appearances, is exhausting. That's why we're chatting about it today. So, some words of wisdom from the Old Testament book of Proverbs. Firstly, Proverbs chapter 16, verse 8. Better is a little with righteousness than large income with injustice. And Proverbs 19, verse 1. Better the poor walking with integrity than one perverse of speech who is a fool. See, the thing that drives dishonesty is the need to win, the need to have a lot, the need to be on top, the need to be seen as something better than we are, to have more than the next guy. And because we want those things, we present something on the outside that we really aren't on the inside. We put on a face, we try to deceive people into believing that we're one thing when actually we're something else entirely. In war, one of the things you try to do is to deceive your enemy. But in life, the whole deception thing is hard work. I know a man who's had a couple of extramarital affairs in his time. And as I watched him live through that behaviour, I saw how his dishonesty took its toll on his health. That's why God's wisdom is basically this. We're better off having less, but having it honestly, than having more, but gaining it dishonestly. Dishonesty is exhausting. And it doesn't have to be grand theft or an extramarital affair. It can be as simple as trying to keep up appearances of being something or someone that we're just not. It can be as simple as always trying to impress people when inside there's a deep poverty. Dishonesty comes in all different shapes and sizes. And what I've discovered, because I used to be someone who was always keeping up appearances... When I gave that away, man, my life just became a whole bunch easier. I realised I didn't have to impress anyone anymore. I could just be who I am, good at some things, lousy at others. That's okay. We're all good at some things and lousy at others. But there's an old computer term, WYSIWYG. It stands for what you see is what you get. And so all of a sudden, when you're a WYSIWYG person, you're not carrying around the burden of dishonesty anymore. You can lie straight in bed at night because you're being honest with yourself. Whatever its form, dishonesty is exhausting and it keeps us from entering the rest and the peace of God. That's what God's Word says. It's better to be of a lowly spirit among the poor than to divide the spoil among the proud. There are some things that are more valuable than money and reputation. Just being yourself and enjoying who you are without any need to hide anything Isn't that where it's at? Come on, what sort of dishonesty might you be prone to sometimes? Is it really worth it or is it tiring you out? Maybe, just maybe, there are a few things we need to let go of so that we can enter into God's rest, his peace, his rest, instead of living under this exhausting, tiring yoke of dishonesty. Now, maybe you find that a little bit confronting. Maybe it's a little bit in your face. Can I just ask you to stop and think over the next day or so to ask these questions honestly of yourself? Because, my friend, this is the message I believe God's giving us today. He wants us to know his rest and his peace. Before I go, I'd just like to remind you that if you have a prayer need, we would love to pray for you. Listen, the only sort of prayer that the Bible teaches about is the sort that has powerful results. Just let that sink in. The only sort of prayer that the Bible teaches about is the sort that has powerful results. So if you'd like us to pray with you, in fact, if you'd like our whole prayer community to pray with you, stop by online at powerfulprayer.org to share your prayer request. It's completely confidential. Your name won't be displayed. And in fact, while you're there, perhaps you could pray for one or two others and leave them an encouraging word as well. The Bible says that the prayer of the righteous is powerful and effective. So let us pray for you and with you. And let's just see what God does, how he intervenes, how he chooses to bless you. That web address again is powerfulprayer.org. I'm Bernie Diamond. I'll catch you again same time Monday with a different perspective.